All right, here I am to talk about the Ankyo cassette deck that I just recently bought at, I think, where was it? Goodwill, I think, yeah. Now, this was quite a risk. Um, what I did was, they had a couple of t tapes you could use to test there, luckily, because what happened was I forgot to br bring my test tape. Um, so, first I tested everything on a karaoke cassette machine to see if it would play on the tape. It played it for about a good flat five seconds and then it went so there's something wrong with the um one of the mechanisms inside so that's good i tested it out and threw it away goodwill is going to make it a lot more difficult for you to test things now because they tie it with those plastic ties they don't want you to really plug them in they make it almost impossible so all you do is you go around and look for extension cords that they have and plug them into that so then you can plug everything in um because what other way you're going to be able to use to test anything there um, so, I, I finally came across the Ankyo deck, and of course this was impossible to test the sound, because all it is is a deck, and it has to go into an external speaker or something, so by itself it's just something like a VCR, it can't do anything. Um, everything worked, ended up turning out fine, the right side was kind of stuck, but after I ejected it and put a tape in a couple of times, it's just as good as the left side. They both play perfectly fine, tested them both. They both reverse and forward pretty fine, it looks like. I didn't really test that out too much. I don't think I will either. I don't think I want to use those modes because that's going to really wreck the gears inside. So fast forward and just like a VCR, fast forward, forward and rewinding. I'm going to do as little as possible. But from what I've seen so far, it works a little on the right and I have a little more experience on the left. So everything works great. The one thing that does not work, stupid notification, the one thing that does not work on the unit is auto reverse. Now this is a feature that would have been nice. Since I'm listening to a lot of audio books more than anything, it would be nice just to switch to the other side of the tape without having to get up and, you know, flip the tape. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work. So, um, let's just... Let's just say that it's really not a big deal to me because I'm not that lazy that I can't get up and flip the tape, but it would have been nice. Um, it has auto-reverse on both sides of the deck, which would make sense, and it just doesn't work. That's probably one of the features that you're probably not going to find in, a mom, in modern days. You're not going to find a deck that's going to be able to handle that because it's probably been used so many times it's bro broken by now. Um, but it's not a big deal. Um, the good thing is now I know one side, both sides work and that's great. So one, I can just keep using the same side until it breaks and then I can switch over to the other. And that's wonderful. A lot of, if you buy a regular cassette player that's in a boom box, it's a different story. But this thing is not portable. So it's something you would use in your house for a setup. If you want to go outside and listen to cassettes, you're going to have to buy a boom box or something. And you're going to have to buy one off of um, Amazon. From, I, I trust Amazon a little more than eBay for a lot of stuff. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go on Amazon. I found this, what's it called? The Craig. C-R-A-I-G. And um, you saw that when I unboxed it. It's on my channel. It's a, it's a nice piece of equipment. It's not perfect. I mean, a lot of people complained about the cassette on it. The cassette works perfectly fine. Um, and you can play cassettes on it, and that's what's good about it. And what's even better about it, it only goes for about 40 bucks now. I was thinking about getting a couple or more just to foolproof my, um, my backups for outdoor cassette listening. Because I do that all the time in the summertime. It's always good to have a backup. So that might be a good consideration. What else with this deck do I like? Well, I'm not into... I don't know. I'm not very technical with this with this type of stuff, so... There's a number that comes on the screen when you're listening to any kind of, I almost said a VHS. If you're listening to a cassette tape, and it'll go one, two, it'll start counting count up. But then it'll go past 60 seconds, and it'll go all the way up to 99, and then go over to zero. I have no idea why it does that. It's probably something stupid that I should already know, but that's just that. Um, what else is there to, um, to figure out? Here's the good thing about this that I think that um, people might want to do if you don't have a receiver to listen to something that comes out of one of these decks is to buy a portable speaker that still has a headphone jack because what you can do is you can get one of those three millimeter, three millimeter whatever it's called, headphone wires 
And then you can get the adapter that goes into the phone, the um, that you know, the phone thing that that's in front of receivers and in this case a cassette deck. And you can put it into that adapter and plug it into the machine. And then you can put the other end into your speaker or whatever it is. That's what I did. My receiver luckily has the same thing as what my speaker has, my portable Bluetooth speaker. And um the stereo wire, whatever you want to call it. And um, that's a really, really good thing because all I have to do is plug it into the. Um, all I have to do is plug it into the um, to to that, and it's all set. Um, you could also use the um, the the rear. Let me get this right. Um, this is terrible. Now <laughs> I can't remember words. It's getting so late. You can use the um, red and white cables. Forget me, it's, it's late. You can use the red and white cables to um, run it into your stereo. The, um, the only problem with that is, is that, um, is that that becomes a pain in the ass. Like usually, like the the method I just told you about using the phone, phone um, headphone thing in the front, is that you can just plug it into the front of the unit. You don't have to go in the back of the unit and plug anything in. Um, Composite. That's what I was thinking. Composite. If you, if you use the composite audio cables, you can um, you can work with them too. But I don't recommend that. It's just another why. I've used so many composite audios. You know what? There's just just to, since this is an audio kind of video, I have to tell you one thing, and I don't th see much of a difference when when I'm listening to um, you know, when I'm listening to a lot of anything. As a matter of fact, just anything. Unless it's like a really, really huge um, film like Game of Thrones where you need the surround sound. Um, you're just listening to 2.0 stuff. It sounds just as good on a, coming from a composite cable than it does anything else. And I don't understand what the big deal is. People always make it a big deal that you have to use a certain cable to transmit audio. Or it doesn't sound the same. I don't know what people are going through right now, but um, that's how it is. Also, I wanted to give some... And further note, I like to give a a thumbs up to Vintage Technology. It saved me from a lot of things because, first of all, I could never keep up with what's going on right now, buying all these current equipment that's thousands and thousands of dollars. Now I can just go to random stores and test my theories out, and you know I'm taking a risk. Twenty five dollars for a tape deck, or I could go to eBay and be an idiot and pay like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. The one I have right now. Even though the auto reverse doesn't work on either side, it's going for about eighty to a hundred dollars on eBay. So twenty five dollars is a pretty damn good deal. All right, bye bye.